I want to take this moment right now with that question you just asked and tell the same thing to all those minor league guys that are grinding it out right now and, and just keep doing your job, you know, keep, keep teaching those players and, you know, and, you know, and you never know. If a guy like me got here, it could be you too. So, yeah, don't, don't think ahead. Don't think about moving up. Just think about your job at hand. And you're going to be a very good minor league player, and who knows? You might be a big league manager someday, like I, like I, I am now. Almost need a documentary on Charlie Montoyo right there, the new manager for the Toronto Blue Jays. The press conference went down yesterday. Our voice of the Vancouver Canadiens, Rob Fay, joining us right now. Welcome. Thank you. Your thoughts on the uh, new man in charge, the new skipper for the, the, the Blue Jays? Well, I don't even know if he thought he was going to get the job uh, a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> then all of a sudden, at the last second, he gets the call from the Blue Jays. They got permission from the Rays, and he interviews and gets the job. But I didn't have him on my top five list, to be honest with you. I had a couple of other guys, including former Canadians manager John Schneider. But it makes sense on a couple of fronts. One, he's good with the youth. Uh, two, he, of course, uh, mentored Vladimir Guerrero Jr.'s father. Uh, and then you think about the analytics. The shiny nickel in Major League Baseball was the Tampa Bay Rays this year because analytically they did a lot of things that the Blue Jays are trying to achieve. So why not dip into the success of the Rays and bring somebody like that into Toronto? How high do you think the expectations will be for this Blue Jays team, much younger team now, given a lot of the veterans have moved on uh, with a new manager? I think the expectation is low. To be honest, I think they understand, much like here in Vancouver with our hockey Canucks, the rebuild is underway in Toronto. And uh, you look at Ryan Barucki, you look at all the guys like Sean Reed Foley that they're bringing into the mix. Uh, this is kind of the perfect manager, an easygoing guy, much like their previous manager who can, you know, like John Gibbons, the old gunslinger, come in and just bring everybody's temperature down a couple of degrees because it's going to be a couple of years before the Blue Jays compete in that division. It's kind of, we're in that phase, and when watching the World Series, you, you'd say, oh, former Blue Jay, David Price did well. Former <laughs> Blue Jays, Steve Pierce, yeah. nailed it with the MVP award, uh, and a lot of these great Jays, Batista, Donaldson, Encarnacion, and you know the controversy behind Asuno. A lot of names are gone, so the identity of the, uh, of the team goes up in the air. The youth movement is crucial, and that's crucial for the Vancouver Canadians. You see this talent: Bo Bichette, uh, Osuna, Stroman, Pilar. They all came through the Canadians. How crucial is it a time for the Vancouver Canadians? Well, I think for the Canadians, it's great because you're talking about former Vancouver Canadians that are getting thrust towards the bright lights of the major leagues. And you know, you talk about what the Toronto Blue Jays are right now, and you talk about all the pieces that they are from being a competitive team. I always like to use the adage: the Calvary's coming. We in Vancouver know that the Calvary is two to three years away. And it's more than just Bowen Vladdy. It's more than, you know, just a handful of guys like Nate Pearson and pitcher TJ Zoic. There is an army of potential prospects that could make it to the bright lights of the major league. So, I mean, you see here the Canadians with four championships in seven years. That speaks to what is on its way eventually to Toronto. What do you think the fan base we see in Vancouver has the interest in this team grow? You can't buy a ticket. When I first took this job, yes, I, I, I say this sincerely, I couldn't give tickets away to my friends. My friends have been busy. I'm like, what are you doing? They're like, ah, oh, i got to rearrange my shoe closet. Now you cannot <laughs> physically get a ticket to a Vancouver Canadiens game. I think the affiliation with the Blue Jays was huge, but more than anything, I think the ballpark experience has kind of taken us over the, over the top. And what's uh, the, the planning? Because we know these games, the broadcast will happen on Sportsnet 650 with your yes. voice. Uh, what's in store for the next few months? Well, in addition to the home and road games being on Sportsnet 650, we've got six nationally televised games coming up on Sportsnet as well. So that's dipping our toe into waters that we've never been in before. So we're looking at this nearly 70-year-old stadium, thinking about how we're going to rewire it and really showcase Canadians baseball coast to coast. You're going to have to break out some of those shoes your friends were uh, attending to in the closet, <laughs> get a nice suit on. Never happened. You know what? You guys get the clothes deals. So I, I don't know. I got a shirt that's too big for me. It's early in the morning. I wasn't ready. <laughs> well, this is great, man. With six national games, we get to support and uh, celebrate baseball here with the Vancouver Canadians. Congrats on the success. Thank you. I look forward to seeing what happens with the Jays and the Canadians. Me too. All right, we'll take a break.